Where did we go wrong? What began as a pushback against much of the sexual promiscuity within church quickly shifted, if not from the beginning, into a toxic movement. But before we talk about that, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone on Patreon as a part of the Daily Disciple Club. Uh, club members are people that are passionate about Jesus and want to support my mission in helping people follow Jesus daily. So thank you for everyone who is over at the Daily Disciple Club on Patreon. And if you want to join and support monthly that would be absolutely amazing and you can join link in the description thanks so much now on to the video purity culture it sounds good doesn't it but what happens when this bombastic call for purity ends up leaving the broken and abused beyond the power of God's grace what happens when we preach purity without the gospel we produce Pharisees. We produce a movement more concerned with law than love. I was raised as a Christian homeschooler in the 2000s, and believe me, I've seen the toxicity that this culture can produce. I found out years ago that I wasn't the only one when I came across this clip from Matt Chandler. Let's watch it. But it, it didn't take long um, before my passion for the gospel and, and my passion to see lost men and women saved um, started to rub against or collide with the church. And, and so it wasn't very long, and, and I, I, won't, I, I can give you dozens and dozens of stories, but, but really one that kind of broke the camel's back where I decided if I was going to do this, I wasn't going to do it as a churchman because the church, more often than not, was an enemy of conversion and not its friend. I'll give you an example. Um, this turn in me, this break in me happened that God has been just disciplining me on ever since. Uh, occurred my freshman year of college when um, I randomly sat next to a, I'm a freshman in college, I'm sitting next to a 26 year old single mother who's coming back to school to try to get a degree, never been to church, didn't know much about Jesus, didn't know, and so we began this ongoing dialogue uh, about the grace and mercy of Christ in the cross. And so um, me and some of my crew go over to her house and babysit her daughter. She's actually in an extramarital affair at the time with a married man. And, and so we've talked through that, the wisdom in that. Um, they, they, this is the relationship we had, just kind of serving her and trying to explain to her spiritual things. A friend of mine was playing at a church in the area, and, and so I asked her to come. He was a musician, and, and so I said, hey, a good friend of mine's in a band. He's playing. Um, why, why, don't you come, why don't you come hear him? And, and so she agreed. She thought it would be a concert. I knew better. It was shady. It was excellent. <laughs> and um, she came with me, and, and we listened to Robbie play, and, and he was tremendous, just a real anointed guy. And then the, the minister got up and he said, today I wanna to talk to you about sex. And so I immediately go, uh oh, this could be a problem. And, and he took a red rose and he smelled it and he showed how pretty it was and then he threw it out into the crowd. He goes, everybody needs to smell this. There's about a thousand of us there, almost all of us college and high school. Smell the rose, I want you to smell it, I want you to touch it, I want you to see the texture in it. Do it, do it, and I'm gonna teach. And, and then he began what honestly, up until this day, and this might have to do with my heart, I don't, I'm still wrestling. Um, was one of the worst, most horrific handlings of what sex is and what it isn't that I ever sat through. It, it was fear-mongering at, at its best. It was, um, you don't want syphilis, do you? And everybody's smiling and having a good time until there's herpes on your lip, and you, right? And so I'm just thinking with Kim beside me, what are you doing? What are you doing? And, and then as it wraps up, he goes, where's my, where's my rose? Where, where, where is it? Where's, where's my rose? And you know, some kid came up, the rose is just completely jacked up. It's broken, the things are off, the petals are broken. And, and he lifts it up in his big crescendo. I mean, his point is to hold up that rose and go, now who would want this? Who would want this rose? And I remember feeling anger, like real, legitimate, I want to hurt him, anger, and it was all I could do not to scream out, Jesus wants the rose! That's the point of the gospel, that Jesus wants the rose, that he made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf that we might become the righteousness of God in him, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Christ won, you're not even teaching the basics of our faith. You know, it's difficult not to get emotional after watching that video every time I watch it. Man, I... Because... 
because as he tells that story and he talks about man having this conversation and this ongoing dialogue with this woman and serving her and being a part of her life and and all the just how meaningful that was I'm sure to her too and in, in the great avenue that was and yet all of a sudden just overwhelming like legalism and and fear mongering and 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 that was that was the point that was like hey you know you shouldn't do this because of all this and this and this and who would want this rose who would want that it is it's not it's not as valuable now right it's not it's it's worth it's worth less now and i guess some of the questions that i would have for you guys and these are the questions that i have personally that i'm asking myself is is there room for a woman like this at your church is there room for a woman like this at your social gatherings is there room for a woman like this at your dining room table do you see her as less because she didn't save herself for marriage do you see her as less of a woman less valuable seems to me that we've forgotten the power of god in his redemption restoration and transformation of all of us because you see that's the beauty of the gospel it's not that we can be a uh, pure enough in order to earn god's favor or pure enough sexually in order to gain eternal life or salvation no that's not it at all in fact we've all rebelled against god we've all sinned against him and we all are in desperate need of his the salvation that only he can provide you see in some ways we're almost making purity our savior we're saying hey if we could just be this pure enough then then god would love us if we could just be pure enough and then we would have a good life if we could just be pure enough then we won't have conflict within our relationships if we could just be pure enough then we'll have blessings and we'll have a fruitful life but purity is not our savior. I'm not saying that we shouldn't strive for purity. That's not my point. But I'm saying that purity is not your savior and somebody that has fallen into sexual immorality, whether they've not saved themselves for marriage or any other context, pornography, whatever, they all need that redemption in Christ just as you need that exact same redemption in Christ. There is hope for all of us in the gospel, in Jesus, but there is no hope for any of us in the false gospel in the false savior of purity. Well, that's all I have to say. If you enjoyed this video or got something from it, please give it a like down below and subscribe because I'm putting out new videos every single Thursday all about the Christian life, being a young adult, engaging the culture. Um, I hope you are enjoying these videos. And if you want to support my ministry, become a Daily Disciple Club member on Patreon. Honestly, it's my goal to do this full time. And every time somebody joins the Daily Disciple Club on Patreon, it makes it that I can spend that much more time on doing what I love and fulfilling my mission uh, that God has given me. So thank you so much for those people that are on the Daily Disciple Club and join link in description. I will see you next week, guys. God bless.